So the essential and the defining element of human action is their voluntary nature. And concisely stated, to be voluntary means that an action proceeds from the will, the rational appetite that is ordered to universal goodness. And in order to explain how human actions as voluntary are unique, Aquinas distinguishes between different kinds of acts. Some acts originate or proceed from what he calls a an intrinsic principle. This means that they originate from within an agent or an actor, one who acts. Other acts, however, originate from outside of an agent or one who acts. So we can see this if we consider the case of the action or the movement of a stone. A stone that is dropped off of a high building acts by moving downward. And a stone that is thrown into the air upward acts in its movement toward the sky. But the difference, which we all know, between a stone moving up and a stone moving down is that the stone moving down does not proceed from within anything outside of the nature of a stone. Stones are the types of beings which, all things considered, will move down. So the principle of a stone's movement downward comes from within. But when a stone is thrown into the air, this type of violent activity, which runs contrary to the natural inclinations, the natural orders of a stone, can only come from a principle of movement or change outside of the stone, which is, as we can imagine, the, the boy, the girl, the guy who throws a stone into the air. And for, their, for these acts, which do originate, however, from a principle within an agent or an actor, Aquinas further distinguishes those agents, those actors, those things which act, move, change, as non-self-moving, a rock would be one of them, but also those types of beings, agents, which self-move. For example, a dog, a cat, or a human person. Now, in every action, the act of a rock, the act of a dog, the act of a human, every action is for the sake of an end. Every action originates from an order to a purpose, a direction, reflective of an orientation of some sort. And the fullness of action comes when the agent knows the end, knows the goal towards which it moves. And in this case, the dog and the human are very similar. So if we have the situation in which a dog and a human are both presented with a delicious cake, and the dog or the human sees the cake, both of them have in their own way some knowledge of the cake. They know the goodness of the cake, and they are moved from within themselves, informed by this knowledge, to the act of eating the cake, to the end of receiving the goodness of the cake in themselves. Stones, Aquinas clarifies, they too have knowledge with regard to their end, but this knowledge is imprinted upon it in its nature, in its natural inclinations by God when he created rocks, and he gave them the end from the knowledge of God himself of moving downward to the center of a bodily uh, a planet, or in the case of a violent motion, like throwing the rock into the air, the human agent who throws the rock into the air acts and imposes his or her knowledge of the end of movement. So the human person and the dog, with regard to the cake, they have knowledge about the end themselves. And the rock does not have knowledge of the end itself. But knowledge always comes with any type of end and any type of activity and in the case of a rock, it comes from God, who created the nature of a rock, or from the human person who throws the rock uh, in a way that does not resonate with its nature. So, we can see, say, however, that in a broad sense, dogs and humans both, unlike a rock, but they have 
a certain voluntary mode of acting because they have a knowledge of a real end or a goal, cake eating, and because they can act according to this knowledge and according to the volitional, the natural inclinations to good things. Dogs and humans like good things both. They can both understand something good like a cake and they can both freely move from that inclination toward good things to the cake. And so, again, voluntary has two essential parts. The first is that it has a principle of action, an impetus, a movement origin within the agent, the one who acts. Secondly, voluntary action always includes knowledge of the end for the sake of which we are acting. But there is an essential difference in different uh, actions, the actions of a dog and the actions of a human person, because there are different kinds of knowledge. Because there are different kinds of knowledge, there are different kinds of voluntary uh, choices. Because the will, the voluntary power, follows the knowledge of the intellect. And so, if we start with the dog, we note the dog sees the cake. But the dog sees the cake, and it has an understanding of the cake, but it is a limited understanding of the cake. The dog does not consider, what is cakeness? It does not consider the cake as its end or as its goal in universal or big picture. It does not reflect about the means to eat the cake. All it thinks about is, there is a cake, and without reflection, I will eat it. In contrast, humans have a fuller, perfect knowledge and a perfect voluntary movement because humans can understand the end as an end. So humans and dogs both look at the cake, see that it is good, but humans uniquely and exclusively amongst all animals, because of the power of rationality, can reflect upon what it means for the cake to be its end. Dogs can only consider the cake as a cake, particularly humans can, can, can consider the cake as an end. And therefore, they can reflect upon the means to the end. They can reflect upon whether they want to pursue this end. They can consider how they want to proceed in attaining this end. And so Aquinas says that the more full, the broader, the universal understanding that we have of the knowledge of the end, the human knowledge, that is a perfect knowledge leading to a perfect voluntary movement considering the end of the cake as an end. Dogs, because they don't have a rational intellect, can't consider the nature of a cake as an end, but only as a particular cake. And that's why, as Aquinas says, with some humor, they act without any reflection and immediately. And so, the essential thing about the perfection of human action, voluntary human action, is that it is a full, a perfect knowledge of an end, as an end, that enables the human person to reflect upon their relation to an end, possible impediments between them and the end, to consider possible means to attain the end, and also and even to consider whether or not they will pursue the end at all. Dogs don't pause to think, you know, if I eat this cake now, well, this might affect how I run after the frisbee in the afternoon, or how I might explore the woods or chase squirrels. Human persons, however, can reflect in these ways. If I eat this cake, that runs in dissonance against my uh, desire to diet and lose weight. Dogs don't think like that. They can't think in terms of uh, the possibilities and the varieties of means and end and relations between persons, agents, and ends because dogs only understand things in the concrete and in the particular. And so voluntary action is synonymous with human action. And for Aquinas, this is one of the overarching and essential points of his teaching about the nature of human act. Mm -hmm.